Well, here is a strange topic. Some of you have probably heard of Stella as she sparked a short but heated recent controversy and if you've heard of her then you probably already know about what happened. I'm making this video for the people who don't. There is ultimately only one person responsible for the situation I will describe and I debated whether to name that person in this video because if I use a pseudonym it might make things confusing but he publicly admitted guilt, so I will use his producer name, but please keep in mind that this video isn't for the sake of drama, it's to educate, okay? So what was Stella? In the first week of January 2015, an experienced Western Vocaloid producer who goes by the name Planty announced that he was developing his own private Vocaloid named Stella. However, he was not able to call Stella a Vocaloid due to legal reasons. Planty claimed that he had only purchased a limited form of the Vocaloid license which would enable him to use the Vocaloid software to create voice banks, but that he would not be able to market the product as a Vocaloid. Stella was therefore presented as a virtual idol rather than a Vocaloid. As a private Vocaloid, Stella wouldn't be sold to end users, so the idea was to create music albums using Stella's voice banks and sell those, with the proceeds going to charity. Something like this hadn't been done before. It was a fresh and interesting concept. Stella had a very cute character design, and some demos of her voice banks were released that sounded promising, especially for a voice bank that was still in development. Here is what I believe was the first demo for Stella. Not bad, right? Stella was reportedly being voiced by a Taiwanese girl and she would be created with the Vocaloid 4 engine, although she would not have growl samples. She would only have Japanese voice banks and a second demo video was released that displayed two append voice banks for Stella, Sun and Moon. <laughs> When I heard those demonstrations, I was impressed. I thought they sounded pretty good, although obviously they still needed more work done. I was getting excited about Stella at this point. Yeah, it was odd to me that a Vocaloid with only Japanese voice banks would be used to sell albums to help an American charity, but we all love Japanese Vocaloid songs, so I didn't think too much of it. 
If this is the first time you're hearing about Stella, you're probably wondering why you haven't heard of her until now. Well, this is where the story of Stella goes from something fit for a Vocaloid video to a Vocaloid Extras video. On January 18th, a new Stella video was posted that showed off Stella's cross-synthesis capabilities, ostensibly using her Moon and Core voice banks. But within an hour, that video would be taken down, because a viewer noticed that the names of the voice banks listed in the bottom left corner of the video were edited. This small detail sparked a chain reaction of conspiracy theories. That the cross-synthesis names were edited was one thing, but several people also emailed Yamaha to ask if Stella was a legitimate project. Yamaha responded that they had not given a license to a project named Stella. I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Stella was revealed to be a fake Vocaloid. She didn't have real voice banks, and she was never going to be a legitimate product. But the outrage over Stella seemed disproportionate to the offense. People were really, really angry about what happened, and at first, I didn't understand why. She was revealed to be a fake, so what? We've had fake Vocaloids before. No money changed hands. But people were upset because while Planty was the one responsible for manufacturing Stella, he wasn't the only person involved. Before the Stella project was announced, Planty didn't have a great reputation in the Western Vocaloid fandom. He was involved in some incidents that earned him a lot of criticism. But the real turning point involved the release of Vocaloids Anon and Kanon in 2014. I'm not sure if the following occurred prior to their release or shortly afterwards, but what happened was that, according to Planty, someone he knew shared some links with him that were supposed to be trial versions of Anon and Kanon's voice banks. The kind that people could use to test out their voice banks for a couple weeks. Though he was asked not to share these files, Planty shared this download with his friends and a lot of other people. But the download was not for a trial version of Anon and Kanon, it was their full commercial release. It's difficult to believe that he didn't know that before he shared it, especially since he was asked not to share it, and he was an experienced Vocaloid producer. But even if he didn't know at first, once he did find out that they were full voice banks, he didn't tell Yamaha about the weak security on their site that allowed this to happen. He didn't report the leak. Before this situation, Planty had many friends in the Western Vocaloid fandom, including talented and well-liked producers. But after he started essentially promoting piracy of Anon and Kanon's voice banks, most of those people began to shun him. In his own words, he lost a lot of friends and he felt abandoned. I bring this all up because Stella's project should have been Planty's way of reinserting himself into the fandom in a positive way. But he was angry and bitter that people scorned him for sharing Anon and Kanon's pirated software. An injustice in his eyes, as many Western Vocaloid producers use pirated copies of Vocaloid according to him. Creating Stella, a fake Vocaloid to fool everyone, was his way of making a name for himself and getting back at those hypocrites. Planty enlisted the help of several of his friends to assist him with creating and promoting Stella. He asked people active in the community to create articles for Stella, box art concepts, fan art and songs, and because of her cute character design, a supposed email from Yamaha, and her cool premise, people wanted to believe that this would be a fun project. Some of his close friends created and managed a website for Stella and helped tune some songs to send to Planty to be used for Stella's demonstrations. Dozens of very talented and hardworking people contributed to the Stella project. They wanted her to succeed and it was a project to support a charity so of course they wanted to help with that as well. But as soon as it was revealed that Stella's cross-synthesis demonstration video was faked, Planty took down all of her videos, said goodbye, and left. So just as people were beginning to realize that her project was a fake, the one person who could have explained everything disappeared. They had to go to the other people listed under Stella's project team, Planty's close friends. They had no idea that Stella was fake. They trusted their friend and believed in him. And since he left, the rest of the Stella team was forced to learn the truth about her from the people who were upset about her deception, 
and they themselves became targets in the first few hours of the controversy. It's a sad story, but it doesn't even stop there. It also came to light that a number of Planty's Vocaloid songs stole music from other musicians. While he later admitted to and apologized for Stella's hoax, he vehemently denied that he plagiarized music. He said he depended on samples that were used by other musicians. But after seeing the evidence, even those who were formerly his friends couldn't deny the plagiarism. He used music tracks from other artists and claimed them as his own. It's as simple as that. This wouldn't be a big deal, at least not big enough to warrant the controversy that this Stella situation has created, except for the fact that Planty didn't always work on these songs by himself. He had help from other Vocaloid producers to help tune, mix, or master some tracks. This is why people became so upset about Stella. It wasn't that Planty was hurting his own reputation, is that his actions were hurting others' reputations as well. How would you feel, as a musician, if your name was credited on a song that turned out to have stolen music in it? The story of Stella is a cautionary tale, but I don't see it the same way a lot of the people upset about her do. They'd say that the lesson is not trust people, but I disagree. You should trust your friends. If you can't trust your friends, who can you trust, right? The lesson that Stella teaches us is to not lie to your friends. Be honest with them and they'll help you find a solution to your problems. And that's the saddest part about this whole thing. The lying was completely unnecessary. Stella's voice banks were created by forcing the Vocaloid 4 engine to cross-synthesize specific voice banks. If Stella had been presented as a fan Vocaloid with a cross-synthesized voice bank, some people would have been disinterested but I think she'd still have gotten a lot of support. As long as the voice bank sounds good and the character is designed well, people will pay attention. Certainly how well she would succeed would depend on effort, but obviously a lot of people liked her concept as a Vocaloid for charity. Though that word, charity, does bring us back to why Stella was created in the first place. It's highly unlikely that someone would go through all the trouble of creating a fake Vocaloid and deceiving dozens to hundreds of people to support a charity, though Planty continued to claim that had Stella's ruse not been discovered, he would have indeed donated all of the money from the album sales to charity. I want to reiterate that I didn't make this video to make people hate Planty. I don't want you to go looking for him or his friends and call them names. This video is here to explain why people were so upset about something that from the outside seemed so minor. The biggest victim of Planty's scheme was himself. He lost what remaining friends he had and whatever career he could have potentially made from being a Vocaloid producer is gone. And for what? Nothing. He threw it all away for nothing. If I may attempt to find something positive in this situation, it's the potential I saw in that Sun and Moon demo. When the cross synthesis feature was first announced, people hoped that it would allow them to cross any two voice banks they wanted to. But they were very disappointed to learn that it would only work between voice banks on the same character. So you could blend Mako V3 Power and Mako V3 Straight, but not Anon and Kanon, despite them being part of the same release. What Stella has shown us is that this restriction is, at least currently, easy to bypass. So it will be possible to cross unrelated voice banks, like say Miku Vivid and Ear Rocks. The possibilities are enormous, and as long as the person doing this has purchased the voice banks he's using, I don't have much of a problem with it. The V4 editor isn't even being sold internationally yet, it's barely a month old. So it is possible that Yamaha will patch out the ability to do this. But as it stands right now, I like the concept of creating new voices by mixing different voice banks. And as long as people are open and upfront about it, I think it has a lot of potential. Imagine a Kaiko song where it's partly crossed with a female voice bank like VY1 to give it a more natural quality. Yeah, it would be a logistical nightmare and classifying and quantifying all of these unofficial crossed voice banks would be a big pain. And I'm sure a lot of them would sound downright awful. 
but I can't help but be a little excited. Please let me know what you think about that in the comments.